It didn't have to because people were taking assumptions and stating them as fact. As in the past situations like this, when the facts are revealed, most people have to eat their words. Unfortunately, the facts aren't revealed until later when the damage is already done. Our superintendent is still trying to collect all the facts, and there is no way one person can say they know everything. We are working as hastily as possible to resolve the investigation. In the past, this has not been done, and we have heard your complaints on that, and we feel things have greatly improved over the last year and a half. Most people in our school district have met our superintendent because he makes himself available to everyone, so you also know that he is always acting in the best interest of our children. This case is nothing different. It is not a personal attack on any person or their character. It is simply an investigation. I, for one, am very proud to say that we have a superintendent who will leave no stone unturned. We all agree that the timing isn't great. It isn't the greatest. But where we are in the sports season, or where we are in the levy campaign, can never be more important than our students. The five people who sit before you to, uh, for tonight uh, were elected by the community to act on your behalf. Because we take these positions very seriously, we would ask that you trust that we always have everyone's interests at hand. Many of you are here tonight are our friends, neighbors, and family. We hear your concerns. As many of you know, in, our, in your hearts, our families, this school and this community are the most important things in our lives and we need to sit back, gather the facts, and come through this as the water the community always has. Andy, Superintendent. I have a few, uh, few updates here and then a brief presentation and some discussion to follow up on where we were last month with extracurricular activities. I, I just wanted to mention that we will have a two-hour delay on Monday, March 26th. Uh, we actually had that built into the negotiation <coughs> with the teachers' union for the end of the first semester, and we inadvertently left that off. And when we realized we had done that, we did not want to have only a couple days' notice for parents. So we moved that to the end of third quarter. That day is the first day of the fourth quarter. So students will have school. We will just be on a two-hour delay schedule. Yeah, I believe some notification has gone out in some of the building newsletters, but we'll have some district-level communication going out on that soon, too. Will that go, like, it usually does for the, on the news and everything, so people? Well, we, won't, mm -hmm. we won't run it on the news, but we'll make sure that it's out plenty of time ahead of time. We'll send it to them out of the market. Uh, grant, grant committee. Uh, we, we had our second meeting last night of our group from the community here and, and actually some other communities that are interested in helping us that work to write and hopefully receive different grants. Uh, one, one thing that we are actively working on is called the Local Government Innovation Fund that was created as part of uh, House Bill 153, I believe, which was the budget bill. Uh, that is, that's, there's two different parts to it, loans and grants. We're interested in the grant portion, and in particular, the state is interested in collaborative efforts. So we approached uh, the Randolph Township Trustees, the Atwater Township Trustees, and we just confirmed today that we're going to hold a meeting next Wednesday, the 15th, at 7 p.m. And I apologize to our Community Action Committee because that's the same time and day as their meeting. But we're under a, a pretty tight deadline and that's when I could get everybody together for the meeting. Uh, we will get notice out to the newspapers on that meeting. This is something that uh, I wanted to bring up here to the board. I talked to the president and I do not feel that this is something that we have to have a board, a special board meeting for. I believe, I, I believe that all three trustees from Atwater will be there. I believe that two of the three from Randolph will. One's going to be out of town, but he said to move forward with it. You're still confirming all of that, but right? um, more than welcome. If, if you, if what I plan to do, uh, represent the district and have some members of our grant, our grant uh, committee that will be present too to have some discussion about ideas on how to collaborate. If you feel, though, that we should have a, 
a special meeting to have everybody present to do that, that can be discussed here too. So that, um, any thoughts on that? What was the date again? It's next Wednesday the 15th. Where is that going to Believe, I, I still need to work out these details so I will get the notice out. I, the Community Action Committee meets in here, <coughs> but this will be an ideal location so I may work to see if I can find a different location for them that night within our building. Um, I would think that if there's going to be more than three of us in the meeting, we have to have, we have to be, we have, sure. But do you think there needs to be three of us? That's what he's saying. Do we need to have the three of us here? It's more of a just talking session, right? It's, it's a not talking, not brainstorming good. session amongst the groups to see if we can come together with something that we can do collectively together that could potentially save money for the townships and the district and achieve grant money to fund. I can go. I mean, I've been, I've been trying to go to one of them all. We've only had the one. I went to the first one, so I had Okay. Uh, uh, Ryan, you want to do that? I'm going to try to make it. I mean, so right now. I was just, well, I was just going to go to represent, but I don't have to. I mean, oh. I, don't, I don't see spending more money to do that. I, if Steve and Brian want to go, then let them go to represent us. Right That's yeah. So, we just have two of us here. Okay. We just talk okay. to this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's Wednesday the 15th and then if one of you guys can't make it, let us know and get an idea. Okay. Great. Um, the next thing, I wanted to, we've been communicating here about holding a board retreat or a work session. We've had a lot of difficulty trying to find a date to do that. That would be a special meeting that we would, that we would open up, put the communication out, public is welcome to attend. Um, but I wanted to talk here and see if we could figure out a date. We may not be able to do that with Diane not here tonight. I had suggested it looked like we're all the way up to June trying to find a weekend date that will work for everybody. But June 9th does not work for two. So June 9th is not, is not going to be an availability. So I wanted to see what we had at schedules here. If maybe we could find another Saturday in close proximity that does. Um, and then I can check with Diane and see if that works and get back to confirm. And the other option would be that we go to a weeknight and hate to add a five hour meeting mm -hmm. after you have work and everything on a weeknight if we don't have to. I'd rather have everybody come fresh in the morning for this. Um, fresh in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if we can look at June. Sixteen. As of right now, for me personally, it's any, the ninth, sixteenth, the twenty-third, and the thirtieth all work for me. Okay. okay. As of right now. Lisa, thank you. Sixteenth Friday Thursday. Okay. And you know. In June. Okay. That that doesn't work for me. When do you get that? Ken, Ken said the later the better. So if we look at the 23rd or the 30th, yeah, all right, let's, how about the 30th? It would be okay. 30th? You know, the 30th is supposed to be July 4th. That would be good because we usually close off the financial. Oh, we could do that. With that special meeting we usually do for financials on the 30th, we could just. We do Friday night. And then the 30th is FYI. I mean, I don't know. I'm because I can, I can have stuff ready Friday night. Can you do the 30th and you can still get stuff submitted on Saturday? No, the 30th would be fine. I just have to have it done prior to June 30th. Okay. There's nothing to submit that day, like mail was. So, right now we're saying June 30th, and I'll check. What's the time? 8, eight, eight to, to 1. 1. So I will check with Diane and then confirm in my next update. Let me kind of throw something yeah. out. If that doesn't work, I would be willing to take a half day vacation. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that would be another alternative. That's a possibility. I mean, I certainly I'd be willing to do that if anybody else wanted to. Because we, I mean, we've been trying. I mean, we're basically we've been trying to do this since, since the first of this year. We're out halfway through the year, so. Sure. Okay. 
And there's nothing in May, that's right. If we did it on a Monday, I believe her shop would close on a Monday. Then just another option. But sometimes she has a class on Monday. Okay, just an option. Okay, let me check June 30th with you know, For some reason that doesn't work, but we'll come back to this other one. Is everybody good with that Monday before, that 25th, is it lunch? As another day to throw out there? I would pretty much do it. Depends on what you're Yes. Yes. So June 25th. Or is that going to mess us up for the year end? I don't know. She might be able to do Wednesday too. Wednesday. I'll check with her. We're going to do it Monday and we try to do it sooner than you. That's fine too. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to bring to your attention, we have a collaborative effort going on. Part of our five-year plan that we put together last year with the community input was to increase partnerships with area universities. And so we have a, a collaborative effort that's going on right now with Kent State University and the middle school. So I, I just want to read you a little, a little paragraph that Matt Montgomery, the middle school principal, uh, provided me. The middle school has partnered with Kent State University to place six pre-service middle school candidates with a mentor teacher who has the same concentration area. The teachers who have agreed to participate are Seth Bowman, Janice Ivanovich, Vicki Gage, Chris Barkhurst, Ron Nepp, Brenda Flairda, Tracy Dunlop, and Tara Warner. The pre-service students will be with us from January through April of this spring semester. The students will be assisting the mentor teacher in any of the following working with small groups, tutoring, rating papers, creating assessments, bulletin boards, displays, photocopying, teacher advisory lessons, supporting the mentor in any way is needed. As the students progress in their experience, they'll be given the opportunity to teach one full week of classes in each of their concentration areas. It's an excellent opportunity for our teachers to be part of the teacher training process, and our involvement will ultimately benefit the educational experience we're offering our students. So I want to thank uh, Mr. Montgomery, the middle school staff, uh, Dr. Turner at Kent State for making this happen. I experienced this program myself as principal over at Crestwood Middle School. And it was, a, it was a, I think, a very mutually beneficial experience for everybody involved. So uh, the last thing that I have tonight is I wanted to continue our discussion from last month. If you recall, last month we had that lengthy kind of gave an extracurricular report to you with a breakdown of where we currently stood kind of our historical perspective when we used to offer or we used to charge pay to participate back in the late 90s um, area school districts where they are with these fees and then a series of questions that we discussed and took a lot of that feedback that you provided at that uh, last meeting and what i've done tonight is kind of come back with a proposal of where, of where I am right now. I don't have a recommendation tonight for you. Uh, my goal would be to next month have a recommendation on what we would do for next school year in the area of extracurricular activities. But I wanted to take you through where I, where I kind of stand right now with my thoughts and then get any kind of feedback that you would feel free to provide tonight on some different things. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about the timeline, our time frame for moving forward with decisions for next year. And I, again, we'll preface all of this with, you know, the discussions and the timeline all kind of hinge upon what happens for us on March 6th with our ballot issue. If we're successful, then we're not going to need to eliminate a significant amount of money for next year. If we're not, then we want to make sure we're in place to do what we need to do. Uh, so. <clears throat> so to start off with this proposal, what I, what I would like, what I'm thinking of recommending is to increase our pay to participate fees three times where they currently stand. And again, this would not start until next next school year. But what would and it would not go into effect if we were to be able to pass this levy here in March. Um, 
High school sports and band would be 300. Middle school sports, 150. High school clubs, 60. And middle school clubs, 45. We've, we've taken a lot of time to kind of look in and, and figure out, so if we do that, we can't just triple the amount like last month I showed you that we had budgeted last year based off of projected numbers when we first started this. I think it was $54,820. And the reality after a full year of pay to participate being implemented, we had brought in, let me look here, I can know when I state a wrong amount, 46 or $47,000. We were seven or $8,000 below where we thought we were gonna be. So we can't assume that we are going to just triple that amount if we triple the cost. So we, we looked around and we decided that if we build a 30% reduction in the number of students, that that may be a good way for us to be able to come up with some type of a figure of what that new revenue would be. So when we do that, that increase uh, projected would generate an additional $40,709 from what's currently budgeted. Okay, right now, like I mentioned, 54820 is already in the budget. And I do want to point out here, when we're looking at what we're going to have to do for next year, if, if we have to make reductions, we're, we're probably looking at a number that is somewhere around the $500,000 range. And I want to explain that for a moment because one of the recent newspaper articles that addressed this had 400000 that was there. Our bottom line on the financial forecast, the five-year forecast, shows somewhere around $383,000 in the hole for next year. In that forecast, <coughs> One of the things that's projected in there is the retirement of certain staff members. And I, I think I've mentioned this before, but for what it's worth, I'll mention it again. Mr. Carpenter used to not forecast those in because you just never know. We don't have anything in the contract that gives any kind of an incentive or anything to, to retire by a certain date or let us know by a certain date. And so he used to not budget those in. When, when the district had that performance audit completed, four years ago. One of the recommendations that they came back with and told him he should be doing is putting in their projections of who's going to retire. Well, the reason that he didn't do it is the reason that, that one of the problems we're dealing with now, because one of our teachers that was projected to go this year has indicated that, that she will not be leaving. So when we add back in the difference between her salary and the projected replacement, that puts us up to about $420,000 in the hole. And then we can't just eliminate and get to zero. We have to have some type of a buffer. And so last year, that buffer for us was somewhere between the eighty dollars to $100,000 range after we finished with that million dollars of reductions that we had done. And so we're looking at a number that's probably somewhere a little over $500,000 in minimum that we want to target for reduction based upon that. So when you take a look at this, an additional $40,000 out of that $500,000, $520,000 is a very small percentage of the money that we're going to actually have to reduce. The other thing that I would suggest to you is that we implement a family cap. Um, we, we obviously have a concern that if we raise these fees, this is a, this is a significant increase. And you know, as with many things in life, it's about finding balance and trying to, to figure these things out. And I, I'm not sure that we found the right balance here. This is still a lot of money that's gonna have to come out of classrooms and programming. Uh, for us, but in order to help maybe offset a little bit of this with families, one of the things that we heard a lot last year after we implemented the pay to participate in November of 2010 was that we should have a family cap. And we had purposefully stayed away from that last year because 
felt that we kept the, the numbers for pay to participate reasonably low compared to the state average for pay to participate compared to other places around us at the time. Uh, but if we're going to look at doing a, a three times increase, a family cap probably makes sense. So what I want to show you here, just to get some feedback from you, I, originally uh, we were thinking maybe a number around $2,000. But uh, Mr. Carpenter was able to sit down and do a very extensive detailed breakdown of where we currently stand with the number of families and then based it that are paying for multiple multiple sports and different things and then taking the new numbers that are being proposed okay these amounts here and we can kind of take a look and see how this would impact different families so for example if we were to implement a family cap of a thousand dollars okay so no family pays over a thousand dollars and pay to participate fees okay let, let me explain what this is here this is the number of families that fall into each of these categories. Okay, this is the amount of money that that family is spending based upon numbers for this year in our pay to participate. And for spring, we use last spring's numbers to project what's going to happen here in the spring. This is the amount of revenue that that would generate based upon the proposed numbers that I gave you tonight of what to increase. This is that set multiplying basically by 0.7, okay, the 30% reduction factor, how much we would actually bring in. Okay, and then this here is where we start to see the savings for families and how much total this would take off of our revenue from that I just showed you from pay to participate. Okay, so at the $1,000 family cap, you can see here, I think I told this up before, this is about 26 families would recognize some type of savings because of that cap. That savings would be just shy of $7,400. Okay, so we go back here for a moment and we <coughs> saw that, that that additional revenue that pay to participate would bring in was just shy of 41,000 so we would have to adjust that amount by the 7400 to get our new revenue amount that we would put into our forecast. Okay, does everybody follow this? The 54 is in the 136470 then because you're adding in what we've already yes. put in the forecast. Yes. So it's not that's not additional that's This uh, yeah, let me explain this here. Okay, this is what it would generate without the reduction factor. This is what happens when we calculate in the reduction factor, but we have to subtract the 54,820 that's already part of the budget from this revenue to get the difference. Okay, and that's where this number here comes from. Okay, and then again, this is the, this is the amount of revenue that we would not receive by implementing the cap. Okay, so this is at the $1,000 level. At the $1,100 level, you can see the number of families drops a little bit and we're just shy sorry hold on here we're just shy of five thousand dollars at the twelve hundred dollar level our savings or our decrease in revenue is just shy of twenty eight hundred dollars thirteen at the thirteen hundred level it's a just shy of nineteen hundred dollars the 1400 level uh, just a little over 1100 and at the $1,500 level which is the last one that we ran projections for you can see here that we're affecting very few families and it's only $510 that's being taken off of the revenue so where we were originally thinking the 2000 that we had kind of talked about um, in the past and I had kind of thrown out there in the past that's really not going to do anything for Waterloo here based off of our numbers. And so if we, if we want to seriously look at adding a family cap and making that meaningful to our community, we probably need to be somewhere in the thousand to maybe thirteen, fourteen hundred dollar range with the cap. 
So uh, with that being said, uh, before we move on, I have a few other things here, with, not with the cap, but before we move on, is there any feedback on, on where you may feel comfortable with the cap falling? The only thing that concerns me You know, it's spiritual. And whether you know, sports is, is, is not above education. I, I mean, there, anybody that knows me knows that I'm a big water and fighting fan. It doesn't matter what sport it is. I've coached most of them boys back there, standing there since they were seven years old. I'm sorry, I don't know a lot of the girls. I haven't coached any girls' sports. But you know, for, for one of their peers, one of their younger peers, not to be able to participate. I mean, when you kill the spirit, you kill the school. You know, this is, this is where their connection is. And, and the only thing that I'm afraid of, and I know that we need the money, I don't want to lose teachers either. But I, I'm just afraid that, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what to think about this. I'm kind of new at this board thing and making all these financial decisions, so you gotta, I may ask a lot of stupid questions, but you know, I've been involved with a lot of these young kids the whole time that we've been here. I don't want any of them to miss out on the sports aspect of, of their high school, their middle school and their high school years. I mean, I, I, I just, it's an important part. It's not the most important part, but it is an important part. And, and I, I just don't want any of them to miss out. And this $300 might be too much. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, I've got two kids that's gonna be, you know, Brady's graduating this year, I'll just have two left. But, you know, the, God knows they gotta play every sport there is, you know, so. And, and I don't mind that, I encourage them to do that. But I'm just afraid that, you know, there are some families that here that aren't as fortunate as me to have a job right now. I'm lucky to have mine. And I just, I, I get very concerned. I know we need the money and I know we need to keep these teachers and I know we need to keep these programs, but we can't kill the spirit of the school. You know, so, I mean, that's the only thing that I'm concerned about. And, and, and you know, may, is there any way that, that if we did something like this, that we could set up payments or something, you know, instead of having to fork over 300 bucks all the time? Or, or maybe, you know, it, it, what I'm afraid of, too, is that if we get it up too high, these kids aren't going to be able to participate. We've got all this money budgeted. We lose 50%. And then we've got even more. So maybe if we made it a little So, Dale, I trust your judgment. You're a businessman. Tell me if I'm not making sense. I trust you. I, I think that we would get more participation at the lower, so we could count on a little bit more money than having it at 300 and maybe go into a 50% reduction and losing even more money. You know, I just, I, that's what I'm concerned about. You know, I, I know a lot of these kids are just, you know, they, they love their sports and they, and they love what they do. Some of these kids, look at how many Waterloo graduates we've had go on to, to colleges you know, pretty good colleges and, 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 and go on and, and playing at the next level. I mean, I'm excited. I cannot tell you how excited I am to, to go watch Brady this year play ball with Long. I'm ecstatic. And there's a lot of the other kids that he played football with or wrestling or whatever. I mean, some of those guys are going to go on and do some stuff. You know, I can tell you, there's a fine bunch of young people staying there right back there. And I love every one of them. I, I'm just concerned about that thing. So we're doing. Biggest, I apologize. That makes one of the biggest influences on a person's life for the rest of it. Ways down the road is teamwork. I'm sensitive to kids. I'm sorry. I agree with you. Thank you. I, I would like to see you know, no matter what we do, and I think they did a pretty decent job of it last year. You know, between the coaches and the athletic director and everybody. Kind of try to come up with fundraising opportunities for the kids to raise the funds 
for, you know, for those that can't afford it and that kind of thing. You've got to come up with more opportunities. Yeah. And and for that, I mean, that's one of those things that, you know, you can't start at the beginning of, of a sports season to raise the money. I mean, that's something that, you know, for the next fall sports, they should be starting the summer and first of all. And then for the winter sports, they should start in the fall. I mean, it's something that you got to be way ahead. I mean, we took a group of kids, Waterloo boys, to, uh, uh, Cooperstown playing a baseball tournament it was like seven dollars. It's like seven hundred dollars each track to yeah. some ridiculous number. And we raised almost all the money. We only had a month because we were late entry. We got our, our commitment late. And we raised almost all the money. You know, we did just we I mean we did everything we could possibly do because we had kids that couldn't afford to go and we didn't want any water with kids to miss out on that opportunity. And I, I mean I think that would be the something we have to try to I don't know who would be able to help then with that, I mean, I know the football team did the, uh, the mulch last year and did really well. You know, but I mean, we got to there's volleyball and golf. I mean, we got to find something to help all those kids that need it. I mean, some kids are like, well, they'd rather just pay three hundred dollars, and that's great if they can afford, or whatever the amount is, that's great if they can afford to do that. But we need to find some way to help the families that can't afford. I mean, that's kind of part of our. Uh, I, you know, we, we can obviously try to come up with ways to fundraise. I, I mean, that mulch thing is huge, you know, and I, I just, you know, I get, uh, I get very passionate about this, man. I, I apologize for coming on blue, but I just, I, you know, when I hear that Viking fight song, and when, when I see one of these kids run out with that helmet on, I, I just, I, you know, that Viking helmet, it, no matter what sporting event it is. I mean, how can you not get excited? You know, I mean, we, we've got an awesome school, we've got an awesome bunch of kids. When I moved out here in 1999, one of the reasons I moved out here was because of this. That's all. And, and you know, if anybody wants to blame anybody for me moving out here, blame Jeff Hamilton, because I used to play baseball against him. And, you know, Jeff and I got to, to know each other. And, and I said, you know, if, if he's indicative of the people that live out there, you know, that's where I want to be. And when I got here, that's what I found. You know, one of the greatest things that I love about this community is that, and, and, and it's proof tonight, that when one of their own are in need, I mean, they pull together. You know, five years ago when I had cancer, and, and this place went crazy for me. You know, people that I didn't know took me under their wing, took my family under their wing. And I, I mean, that's, that's what we're all about, you know? So I, I, I'm glad that you guys are to, here tonight to hear all this stuff, and maybe we can come up, you guys have got some solutions that we can do. But we've got to make sure that not only do these kids get the number one education, but they have the chance to enjoy to play soccer, play volleyball, play in the band, or do whatever they want to do. So, I'm done. Steve, I got a, I got a question. How many people, participants, did you lose when you had a fee last year? Did you have a drop off there? And if you did, uh, some school districts passed their school levy and got out, of, got out of the red, but they kept the paid in place. If, if some of these school districts, if you, if you check on it, they still have it and maybe drop it a little bit. But to play any sports at some of these bigger schools over there, you will continue to play, pay, you know, like $100 to $200, no matter what school. If the levy passes, yeah, that's everything will stay the same as it is right now. It will stay at $100. $100. It stay exactly what it is now. Yeah. And we uh, This is only if it doesn't pass because we have to cut. Now back, I could, back when you mentioned before, 1990, my kids were involved in that, and it, I feel the same way. He, uh, my kids would play no matter what I had to do as a parent. Right. But you look back what happened here in the school district, the parents would have stepped up under these circumstances and passed the levy. The first time and second time, we probably, probably would be discussing this tonight. You'd be paying less for one child. Let me go ahead and look deep down. Mm -hmm. You have to make a choice when you go in for that decision that's about no matter what influence in this community has happened, it's for the kids and nobody else. To answer your question, 
I, I can give you half of it and I can give you the other half when we when I have a calculator to add these up. I don't want to take right now, but when we based the projections last November, there was a total of two hundred and four at the middle school and uh, let's see here. Five hundred and seventy two participants at the high school. I have the breakdown. It was part of that report that we passed out last month here, so I could total all of those up. Well, if there has been, I don't think you lost a great number. No, and it's going to be skewed a little bit because when we did, like I explained last month, when we did the initial proposal to the board, I had included in there some different groups that the board decided not to charge the fees to. Quiz Bowl. Um, what else was there? Student Council. Quiz Bowl. Uh, Beta National Honor Society, and then chess went away this year because it was part of our reductions. And so the numbers would be a little skewed, but I, I would say that it's fair to say we probably did have a little bit of a drop off. It was nowhere near a 30% drop off. Okay. Uh, other comments? Just that this is just one more instance of quality of life issue that um, we need to address with the levy. Unfortunately, we wish we didn't need the money. We wish prices were going up. It's the trend. We know what our obligations are. Um, it's hard to avoid uh, these cost increases. Many of them are outside of our control. Those that are outside of our control are in the business of education. Uh, we have to educate our kids. Not only are we reducing their opportunities, but uh, things like this come to the forefront of uh, quality of life issues for the kids and uh, also for us as a community. So I can't, um, I can't stress enough how important uh, the levy committee and the community action committee, uh, the assistance that they would need uh, to help, you know, get out the word, the desperate straits that uh, we're in as a community to educate our children and uh, still provide these these uh, quality of life activities that mean so much to uh, the young people. It, it is really a shame that there's a lot of great things going on in the school system that they're completely <coughs> shattered by the fact that we are constantly worrying about finances. I mean, we've, we've implemented some dual, dual credit classes. We, we were constantly, even though we're trying to do more with less, we, uh, we, we entered into an energy savings program. We saved over $100,000 last year in utilities. Huh? On top of that, was it last month or the month before that first energy came in and gave us another check for $54,000? I mean, there, it, it's just there's so many good things going on that are completely lost in the fact that, you know, we're worried about how we're going to survive and, and we don't have, you know, and it's a really a credit to, to the entire staff administration that they've been able to, in spite of all these other things going on, they've, been, they've still been able to stay focused and, 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 and do the things they need to do to improve the school system. So, um, like, like I think Ken and other, all of us would say, most, the best thing we could do to avoid increased paid participation fees or reductions and teacher cuts and staff cuts and all those kind of things is pass the levy coming up here in March. And I know that's, you know, it's, I think Lisa kind of touched on it, but the amount, the amount, one student participation fee of $100 or $300, it, that one time is more than it will cost the average taxpayer per year. So it's, a, it's I mean, it's just one of those things we just have to do that. Yeah, and it, just a couple, a couple more comments to touch on some things that we talked about last month uh, that I that I think are important here. Uh, the the first is. My, my intention is not to go after extracurricular programs. I'd like to see us have more extracurricular programs. I, I participated in them myself. Maybe shockingly to some of you, but I participated in them <laughs> Did myself. Did you see me almost fall out of my chair? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I understand the importance of those, and they are a very huge component of all around education. But like we talked about last month, a lot of what I've had to do over the last year and a half is come before you 
and bring to get bring to you which one I of two bad things which I think are going to have the least negative impact on students. And as I look at this, I look at it as a big picture item. Extracurricular activities are a piece of everything that we do here. And while they're important, so are the programs that are happening here in the school. We spent a lot of time last month pondering if we raise these fees so much, will we lose kids to neighboring districts that don't charge through open enrollment and end up on a negative side money-wise as a result. After the meeting, I started to think, you know what? Who's to say we wouldn't lose just as many, if not more, if because we don't try to find some balance in how we do these cuts, we turn around and eliminate all kinds of programs here in the school, which is our other option. You know, so that's why I think there has to be some kind of a balance here. And while, the, while these fees are much more than any of us would like, uh, unfortunately, I, I think that they're, they're a necessity to be able to continue to hold on and provide everything that we possibly can for the students for as long as we can. And, you know, and while it shows the importance of the issue that we're asking the community for, this is not being done as a sales pitch for that. I mean, this is just the reality of what we're dealing with. I mean, we, we have, as you'll see here in a moment, time frames and timelines that we have to work on because of contracts and things. And so while we hope for the best for March 6th, and our Community Action Committee has definitely been working really hard to achieve a positive result for us, we have to plan for the worst. And, and so that, that's what this is all about, and unfortunately. Can I say one thing? We, we talked about that Community Action Council several times, and I see Tim Moore. Does everybody know Tim Moore? If you don't get to know him, him and Dave Perry are doing this. I, don't, I didn't want to steal anything from you, Lisa, but I, I thought I didn't know if Tim had to leave or not. No, I asked him if he wanted me to introduce him, and he said no. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about it is, I ain't asking. But, you know, this Community Action Council is something that this this school and this community has needed for a long time and I commend you and Dave for taking the, the bull by the horns and we got I don't know we had about 20 people here last night I'd love to have about 42 so I mean Wednesday nights at 7 we're meeting here and, and it's not just about the levy you know we want to continue to to meet with the, the, the folks of the community as we're trying to make these decisions you know and, and anyway just thank you very much get to know Tim and he'll tell you all the details I'm sorry. You're okay. Um, I was, I was go ahead, Lisa. Say that, um, just to go off of what Andy was saying, um, this is something else that we, you know, I'm sure everybody sitting at this table voted for it. So, you know, but unfortunately, we're the ones that have to make the hard decisions. When you get everyone, I mean, like Rick was saying, if we would have voted this on the first time it came on, you'd be paying about $280 a year. Everybody's probably, if you have a kid, you're paying more than that right now. And that's not a threat, that's the facts. And the, the state came in uh, last year and the representative from the state, it's not gonna go down. And that's not anything we have control over. It's going to continue to go up and they're gonna continue to, they're gonna, you know, just like one of the credit, credit uh, bureau, they're gonna have Waterloo people are gonna have that debt and they're gonna have that forever until it's paid. So it's not something that we're, we do not want, we don't want to pay for this, right? We don't want to cut teachers. We want to have, we have young teachers that were here that are at other places and it just breaks my heart when I see them. You know, it just, it is not something we want to do. Nobody wants to do it. But as when we went through and ran for office and we took the oath of office, we were told, I mean, our job is to make sure the school is financially secure. And unfortunately, it comes down to, yes, sports are important. And, I mean, I did too, and my kids did all through school, but our job is to educate the kids. And that is what has to be our number one priority. And Dr. Hill has done everything he can not to touch on that. But at this point, if this levy doesn't pass, it will definitely, definitely, you'll see a big difference. And unfortunately, that's just how it's gonna have to be. So. Yes, this is a lot of money, but I mean, from five hundred thousand dollars 
taking forty thousand dollars away. That it's not. It's a drop in the bucket, unfortunately. It's a lot of, out of your pocket, but it's it's not helping us a whole lot. So we're trying to do that. Plus, we're going to also have to do some other changes. So. The other thing that I would suggest outside of the pay to participate, we had some discussion on this last time, and it seemed like everybody thought that this was a good idea. That would be to establish and implement a minimum participation number for each extracurricular activity based upon what's needed to sustain each program. Uh, I, did, I did meet uh, uh, right after our last board meeting with Nick Julia and John Hercheck, and they were able to go through and create and provide me what they, they projected numbers to be next year, but also what they felt we needed to sustain a program. So we do have uh, numbers that we're working with, um, verifying those, uh, doing some cross-checking to make sure that we're, we're comfortable, but I think they did a nice job with that. Uh, so I would, I would, in conjunction with the pay to participate, also make this a factor. And, you know, the, the contract allows us to advertise positions, but not fill those until we know for sure that they're required and needed. So we would just kind of take this step by step. We also looked into timelines. We looked, talked last time about time timelines of how soon you have to notify the league and other, and other uh, teams if we're not going to field a team. And uh, John felt that if we gave notice a month before the season started in just about every case except for the big revenue sports of basketball and football, he felt that we would be okay with, uh, with being able to back out of the season. He said that we currently are under no contracts with schools where we have to pay a penalty to get out of if we don't compete. So as far as the timeline goes, uh, March 6th we have the levy request on if if we're good, if things go well for us that day, we don't need to worry about these other things. Um, but in looking forward to what has to happen if it doesn't go well, March 8th, we have our board meeting. And what I would like to do is be able to come back to you with the recommendation for you to vote on as far as what to do for pay to participate for the 12-13 school year. At uh, the end of March, we have to give notification to the teacher union of our intent to reduce positions for the following year. We do not have to do it for our non-certified union, uh, but if there's going to be reductions made, I would, I would like to be able to let each of the unions know at the same time what, what's going on. And then April 11th would be our board meeting where we would reduce or recommend to you the reductions that have to occur with personnel and ultimately programming for next year. Uh, and then after following that board meeting, official notice would be given to those individuals that are affected. So that's kind of the time, the time frame that we're on as far as our next three months go, two and a half months. Uh, I, any other comments on this pay or participate? I, last time, um, as president, we were able to get some feedback from those in attendance, and if it's okay, I'd like to see if there's any other feedback tonight. Yeah, too. just one quick thing. We talked about elementary also. Yeah, you know, I forgot. Elementary, part of, I didn't add that on there, I meant to, I'm sorry. Drama? I would, part of this would be to, to add elementary fees the same as the middle school fee for clubs, high which is drama, high flyers, and and the um, uh, honors choir, honors choir, those three that we talked about last time. I meant to add that here, and I did not. I apologize. That's fine. Okay. Uh, is there any thoughts or feedback? Anybody here on this tonight? What?
you'd have someone like me and JJ and a couple of years to go to the able to go to that next day to college. But they have a minimum to just go on the kids that come out and they're going to have a change to the money in schools. Yeah, and that's a very good point. That's an unfortunate side effect of all of this. I will tell you this, based off of the uh, projected numbers that they're anticipating for next year, uh, I think there was only one area that didn't have enough projected for the minimums that they thought were necessary to sustain a program. Okay. But ultimately, your point is very true, if, if that's what happens. Any other feedback? I don't like scholarships and what this slide would be scale. Okay. Because I work with building for kids in the world. A lot of them are not, would not be able to um, afford $1,500. So to be able to, like, I know that when they go to hospitals and that, if they don't have insurance, they can do more like, care insurance. But it would be like a slide and fee scale based on their income. Yeah, we can look at something like that. Any other ideas? Comments? Okay, thank you. I, I will email this to you, and I also, these also, all of these presentations get posted on my website off of our district site, so if you ever want to see what these are, they're all, they're all there. I'll have this up there tomorrow. Another thought, too, while Tim's here, um, if anybody wants to get on the email list for the Community Action Committee, do you have a piece of paper over there? Yes. Okay. So before you leave, if you want to do that, you can get Tim your email, and they will send you updates from the meetings if you can't go. I see some volunteers right back there. <laughs> so the rest of our agenda here tonight, you're going to see that we have a different format. Right. Um, so next up is the treasurer's report. Yeah, my report tonight, I just need to let you know that we need to add addendum items to an addendum uh, given to you tonight. So we need to add addendum items number 10 through 12 under superintendent business and also item number 12 under trader business. If you want to take a moment to look at those if you have any questions, uh, glad to answer those for you. Those will be added to the consent agenda. Sure. Um, so we, we're moved to where we're doing this consent agenda now. The idea behind a consent agenda is that you do uh, one motion to accept all of the items that are listed underneath it rather than doing them individually. When we get to that point tonight, under my items, there's a couple that I will make a couple clarifications on before I recommend everything to you. And Todd has any clarifications, he'll do the same. But we'll just do one motion to accept them all. If there's anything that's under the consent agenda that anybody has an issue with and would like removed, we could you can make a motion to have that removed and we'll separate it out as a separate item to discuss and vote on the at the meeting. At the meeting. At the meeting. And if I know that we ever have an issue that is something that needs to be discussed on its own, uh, I will separate that out ahead of time before the agenda is put out. So everything you got in your packet is there, but then the items on the agenda items are the only thing that you haven't seen yet. Make sense? All right. Uh, Diane's sick tonight, so she's not here. Um, she does the make with uh, career center report. Um, legislative report? Okay. Actually, there's not a whole lot other than um, they're just ramping up from the holidays. Uh, one of the things that um, I will be pursuing is uh, 
review of the web page from OSBA, uh, specifically for new board members and taking advantage of different um, opportunities to uh, meet with different boards and board people uh, from throughout the state to help us become better board members. So I'm sure that um, you know those that have been on the board for a while are, are very aware of those opportunities to uh, to meet and extend their training. Um, one of the things that uh, definitely is a, a serious part of um, the legislative report this month would be House Bill 116. And what that does is it expands the definition of bullying to include cyberbullying. Uh, in this day and age where technology is such a major part of, of our lives as well as our children, um, this is something that's had to be you know, instituted uh, into our, our programming uh, to protect our ch children uh, from, from the different, um, I guess, bullying tactics that they can sometimes get used unwisely. Um, and it, it requires school districts to, ex to extend their, um, their policies um, to make sure that uh, we get those policies out to all our children and our parents. Uh, it gives requirements as to when to do that, how to do it. Um, and it also provides for, uh, for training for the anti-bullying policies that we institute through our administrative efforts and through our teaching uh, professionals. So this is this is much needed, probably long overdue. Uh, this is kind of a, a tweaking of the policy to bring it up to more up to date. So that's a good thing. And you know, that's, that's, that's like texting. Yes. Facebooking. Yes. Everything. But one of the things that I thought was interesting about that though is the policy includes cyberbullying, but it doesn't include. It does not address cyberbullying off our premises. So if you send a text from in our building or Facebook from in our building, well then our policy covers you. You know, that's obviously a violation of so on and so forth. But if you go home and do it, it's a real great area, right? We, have, we have to be able as a school district in a situation like that, we have to be able to prove that it materially disrupted the school day for us to be able to take action on something that didn't happen at school or a school-related activity. And if you, if you look at court cases, upon court cases in that area, that's a very large burden for a district to prove. Uh, maybe one of the reasons that they purposefully left that out, there was um, two cases in Pennsylvania that both went to the third district uh, appeal court, federal appeal court. They were very similar. They involved a student creating fictitious accounts of a, of a staff member on, I think, Facebook. And one, one, I guess with these appeal courts, they don't meet all together. They meet in like groups of three judges from the appeal court. So one group of three judges ruled that the district was right to discipline the student. The other group of three judges in the other case that was similar ruled that they were not right. So then they had to meet all together as the entire review group, and they found that the school district was wrong in both. They reversed the one, and the U.S. Supreme Court just denied hearing the cases. So there's there's not a lot of uh, legal basis that supports schools to be able to do anything like that. And my guess is that probably influenced some of this legislation. And it was an opportunity to extend, I guess, the program even further to where we cover, um, you know, like on our bus bus trips and things of that nature where kids are more inclined to um, maybe in passing the time not necessarily make the wisest of choices. So, um, you know, this is just an ongoing opportunity for them to uh, to review and, and uh, further enhance the anti-bullying legislation, and I think it's a, in this day and age, it's a very crucial part of what we do. 
maintaining some some uh, seriousness and civility around the educational process. Okay, does anybody have anything under new or other business? I just was going to say how I, I was, the levy committee has a meeting where Marlowe the Community Action Committee has a levy meetings on Wednesday, so I haven't been able to make a lot of them because I travel sometimes on Wednesday. I was able to get to last night's and they're doing a fabulous job um, looking at all the avenues, all the possibilities, how to promote the levy. Um, getting out the social media with Facebook and Twitter, which I'm sure many of you have seen, so they're doing an excellent job. They're, they're organizing door-to-door -door campaigns, phone call trees and things like that, and, uh, and certainly if you uh, would like to be involved, we are waterloo.org, I believe it's the uh, way. So, but you guys are going to have this job. It's very nice to see. Usually, every levy I've ever worked on since I've been on the board for over 20 years now, it's, it's been pretty much driven by, by the board and teachers and that kind of thing. It's really nice to see, you know, the, the fresh ideas, the community people, and all the community members and that in there. It's, it is really uh, excellent. So, good job. Great job. Anybody else? Okay. Um, everybody said time to look at the... I have a, a couple of, you want to I want to comment on a couple of the items here before I recommend to you to accept the, the consent agenda. Uh, under the superintendent's business, number number nine, these two by two pavers that we have that we're trying to, we're going to dispose of according to the board policy, what we will do is put out an advertisement to, to attempt to sell these. But just so you know where these came from, these are the pavers that we had out here in this entranceway where we were placed with concrete this year. And the reason that we had done that is that during times of the year like this, except when it's a lot colder, those were really getting off, off kilter and, and really a safety hazard with, uh, with stepping. So we did that over the summer. We had those sitting back. We were debating whether there was somewhere else we could use them. Uh, but we, we can't figure out a location to use them where we won't have the same issue. Can I have a suggestion? Um, I'm sure Lori will attest to this. When they try and get in the trailer for the drama club trailer, it's usually in the spring and it's usually a muddy mess. I, 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 I apologize, I should have. I just, Are you okay? I just sort of came to me looking at Lori. I thought, you know what? Usually it's a mess back there, so would that be a possibility? Possibly. Or is that something you'd have to dig out and be able to more work? But I don't know. We will we'll look into it. I mean, would that, you think that would work? Something like that? It would. Ideally, quite months. honestly, hey, ideally, we would like to be able to move that stuff out of there okay. somewhere back in the building and quite yeah. honestly get rid of, oh, okay. get rid of that trailer. Okay. I don't know how soon that is in our future to be able to do that. We've been looking at the building. Maybe temporarily. Just looking there, just a, I don't know. I, you guys That's have a right. bigger point right. in it. That was just something. Well, and then under the uh, addendum items under the superintendent's business, <coughs> I just wanted to uh, comment here on a couple different things. Number 10, this one-year limited bus driver contract. The reason that we're hiring a bus driver is because we had a resignation last month. And so this driver, through the whole, she's replacing the position that was open. There was some bumping that took place within the current drivers, and the position that ended up open is being filled by Ms. Rutter. Uh, and then, the last one, uh, I wanted to, I can find my copy here. Uh, Doris Yerke has submitted her retirement resignation letter. And so she, she writes that first she'd like to say that it's been a privilege to be a teacher in the Waterloo District for 35 years. She could not have hoped for a better career experience. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So having said that, it's time to move on since she's offering her resignation as of May 31st, 2012. So I want to thank Mrs. Yerke for her 35 years 
here at Waterloo. She's done a fantastic job. We're sad to see her go, but we're also very excited for her and what lies ahead for her and for the future. And you know, she's excited and looking forward to it. I was fortunate enough to have this kid in the fifth or sixth grade, and she was just a she was the great person that she is now. She was just like that. I mean, we're losing a tremendous asset to the district. Hopefully, she enjoys her. Well, I have to say, she's the only teacher my son was scared to death of, so. <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. So, she yeah, we'll miss her. She, good luck to her, though. I know she's been looking forward to this for a little while. Todd, do you have any comments on the years? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I'm going to I'm going to recommend then that you approve the consent agenda, of the superintendent's items one through twelve. And treasurer's items 10 through 12. Okay, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Terry? Yes. John? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. I have a motion to recess into executive session. Lisa, we, I want to add. Lisa? No, I want to add oh, onto okay. this uh, A8. Oh, you did tell me that. I have it on my other notes. Okay. Can I have a motion to recess into executive session um, for the sole purpose of consideration of, of the following matters? Um, one is. A8, which is investigating investigation charges complaints, and um, D, which is preparing for conducting and reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms or conditions of their employment. Motion. Um, so moved. I'll second. Okay. Questions or comments? We will not be taking any action on the meeting, correct? Correct. No, no action. There will be no action. We don't expect to have any action reconvening out of executive session. Mr. Terry? Yes. Gum? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Joe? Yes. Motion passes. Lisa, could I say something just real quick to sure. everybody in the audience? I run into John her check today at the post office. He has it myself and all the Miller family support all the Waterloo sports and the Waterloo school as we have for all these years. And he asked me if anybody, if I saw it, anybody else, if they would please support the kids and coaches in the school. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yes. I wanted to say something. It's also something along with what you said. Um, I also heard some rumors about this. It was uh, people saying that they're not going to support the levy with this whole church check thing going on. Um, don't don't listen to that. Pay for the levy. I mean, vote for it. Say yes to it. You need it. It's not about the whole church check. If he's going to tell us to support the schools, then we should listen to what he wants. It's not about what he wants. It's about the levy. Thanks, Tom. Come back next month.